There are few topics more polarizing than abortion. But in the black community, it's where the realities of inequality collides with faith and politics. Tonight, we explore how the value of human life fits into the conversation around black lives. Here's ABC's Deborah Roberts. When you saw what happened here, did your whole family talk about it? That was the time for the conversation, you know, the conversation that you have with your sons about how the world is gonna see them differently. My 18-year-old son just started driving. He's a good kid, but the world sees him as a threat. Standing here at this weather-beaten memorial for Michael Brown, Sherilyn Holloway reflects on the moment her own activism was ignited. We have to recognize that we do not respect the human dignity of black men and women. How much does that factor into your feelings about abortion? I mean, it's all relevant because here's a man who was shot. He couldn't defend himself. The same way a baby can't defend themselves in the womb. Both of those lives matter, and both of those lives deserve to have someone speaking up for them. And I can do both. From the womb to the tomb, all of it matters. Sherilyn is the founder of Pro Black, Pro Life. Here in Missouri, as in a number of states across the country, challenges to Roe v. Wade are mounting, even as most Americans believe women should have access to abortion. This is the last abortion clinic in the state of Missouri. Yeah, we are it. The laws in Missouri are very strict, so it just made it hard for people to stay open. What specifically is your job here? I'm the director of surgical service, so I oversee abortion, advanced care and things of that nature. You're a black woman. Yes. You're a Christian. Yeah, I am. You're also a strong advocate for abortion rights. Yes. Is that a conflict to other people? I'm black. I'm a woman. I love God. I go to church, and I believe in abortion. Kawana and Sherilyn are really similar in so many ways. Two moms who believe that black lives matter and that God is real. But on that one subject that drives each of their activism, abortion, they're on opposite ends of the aisle. The issue uniquely affecting their community, black women have the highest abortion rates, 17% higher than white women. Within the black church, it sometimes feels like no one asks, no one tells. A number of the impoverished single mothers that I went to church with, they were suffering under a need for reproductive rights in order to make ends meet. But our pastors from the pulpit would force upon them the idea that God would see you as guilty. And yet, here we were, all together still. So in a lot of ways, <laughs> we preach something that I want to call complex. It was um, an interesting, strange hypocrisy. For both Kawana and Sherilyn, the issue is deeply personal. At what point did you stake out a feeling about abortion and whether it's right or should be even allowed? After my second one. After your second one? After my second one. You did have a second abortion? I did. I sat on my floor and I wept. At that point is when the Lord started to really work on me, because I was tired of being a subpar Christian. I was tired of saying I was a Christian and not acting like one. Your argument is not just anti-abortion. I realized that I couldn't just be pro-life, that I also had to be pro-black in order to ensure that for generations to come, that we still exist. Do you think abortion should be illegal? I think abortion should be unnecessary. People often say, she had five kids and she fight for abortion. How does that mix? That was my choice. I had the right to choose to carry to term and parent. But people would be surprised to hear you say God is calling you yeah. to help provide abortion rights. Yeah. And then I would say to them, what is God calling you to do? You need somebody always in the midst of the mud. If you have an issue with where God has placed me to be able to fight for people, then that's something you got to take up for God. Yours is not a face that we see often in the pro-life, anti-abortion movement. Is that a difficult place for you to be? I'm bringing forth a message that is very different from what they're 
used to hearing or saying for people that look like me that are in the pro-life movement. If we are going to talk about the life issue in terms of race, then let's talk about it completely and wholly. The reality is this is the structure in the country that you built. Stop using my community as a talking point if you really aren't going to be there for my community. God is complex. And God knows that a fetus is a beautiful part of a continuing creative legacy. And yet so too is the opportunity that that fetus has to even survive if it's inside of a black birthing body. Let's talk about medical apartheid and black birthing rates. If Serena Williams can't have a good birthing story, please don't talk to me about Peaches and them out here outside of my church struggling to find medical care. This black skin is beautiful, but it's hard. We suffer in poverty, health care, and so it's like another barrier on top of us when we decide to make a decision to terminate. The woman who is suffering, we still need to see to her. We still need to help her. That's black lives. So I'm not gonna turn my back on the black girls who choose abortion. I'm not gonna do that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.